Refurbishing a vintage model steamboat part 14, fitting the condenser oil trap and strengthening the structure. Here you see the bracket that I made, and it's freshly removed from the acid bath, and if you have a look at this bracket in the previous episode, you will see how different it is. Now the acid has removed all the flux residue, and it's all been assembled now, and painted, and it's now the colour it's going to be, which of course is black. It sits in the bottom of the boat and most of the parts are black. This is a piece of mahogany and it's also painted black and it's a fancy shape. And the reason for this is that it's going to sit in the bottom of the boat and support the condenser. This piece of wood acts as an insulator to stop the condenser being kept excessively cool by being permanently fastened to the steel hull. If that was the case there would be far too much condensate in the condenser all the time. The basic function of this condenser tank is to separate the oil from the exhaust. If the exhaust from the engine was pointed directly up the chimney, a lot of oil would escape out of the top, and small oil spots would soon appear all over the surface of the lake where the boat was sailing, which could be dangerous to any wildlife also using the lake. What I'm doing at the moment is tapping a hole in the mahogany. This is a 2BA thread being cut in a 5 30 seconds of an inch hole, after which the hole is filled with cyanoacrylate adhesive, which will harden the thread, and this is something I've done many times over the years whilst building model aircraft. And after wiping off the excess, the studs are screwed into place, and these will be quite permanent. I've just put a couple of nuts on here to make sure that the nuts fit the threads, and indeed they do. And the next thing to do is to just have a test fit of the condenser to make sure that all the holes line up with the studs. And yes, they seem to do that okay. Before mounting the condenser in the boat, the mahogany part is thoroughly painted. It needs to be very waterproof. And then it's stuck in place onto the bed plate that's in the bottom of the boat using some epoxy resin. This epoxy resin is a two part mix consisting of the resin and the hardener. And you need to put equal amounts on a piece of board and then mix them thoroughly. This epoxy resin is very nasty stuff. Try and avoid touching it. It might be a good idea to use rubber gloves or some sort of all over biohazard suit. I use my hand, I just don't touch the stuff, that is the art of it. If you don't touch it, it's not going to do you much harm. It doesn't particularly smell bad, and I'm not in the habit of sniffing epoxy resin either, but uh, just be careful with it, that's why there's a caution symbol clearly displayed to the right of the action. This boat is very difficult to work on, there's no room to get your hands in. As you can see, it's very difficult, and I did get some epoxy resin on my hands, which is extremely bad, so what I did was I removed it using some methanol. Methanol removes epoxy resin very well, but I'm not really sure whether methanol is equally as bad for you on the skin. Anyway, we shall see. In the fullness of time, if I die of some epoxy resin related disease, I will briefly re-edit the video before they nail down the coffin lid. All joking apart though, Epoxy resin is very bad for you, do not get it on your skin. Once I'd thoroughly coated the bed plate with epoxy resin, and of course this bed plate was very clean, and it was all scratched up with some sandpaper to provide a good key, I could then fix the condenser on its mounting plinth permanently in place. Over now to the stern, I'm not happy with the arrangement for the servo mounting that controls the rudder, and it took some removing, this is in high speed. Again, it's quite a well-made gadget, and particularly this part, which is the main arm, the tiller arm. What a clever idea. It's a little bit, I don't know, over-engineered, but it works very well. I didn't like this contraption, though. This is a little bit unnecessary. I have an entirely different method for mounting the radio control system. But first of all, I have to strengthen the boat. This is a very old model boat, and some of the solder joints are getting a bit weak now. So what I'm doing is removing some of the soldered parts that were about to fall off and replacing them with plywood and epoxy resin to hold the piece of plywood in place. This is a very necessary thing to do in my opinion because I do not want to risk the boat collapsing in the water. The main hull is very strong and that is a good thing. But where some of the other parts mount onto the hull there are several weak points. So I'm going to fix all of these in the fullness of time. In a couple of episodes I will be showing how I use Milliput, which is a two-pack epoxy putty, to reinforce some hidden areas. This is going to be a great way of strengthening the boat, 
re-soldering is out of the question. Apart from it would burn off the paint, which I don't want to happen. I just don't want to put any heat near a hull of this age that's soldered together. In this last bit, I'm just cleaning out all the filth from inside the boat. Quite a lot of this is filth that I've created by grinding away the epoxy resin. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.